what is up people and welcome to another video in this video i'm going to show you guys how to monitor a kubernetes cluster using open source tools like prometheus with ease So this guide is specifically updated exclusively for Kubernetes 1.18. All the infrastructure I'm going to show you is all derived from the CoreOS Kube Prometheus repo. If you scroll down, all the documentation is here. If you need this to work on any other version of Kubernetes, you need to come over to the compatibility matrix. This will show you a table of all the Kubernetes supported versions. In this guide, I'm going to show you Kubernetes 1.18. If you need any older version or newer version of Kubernetes, you need to come over to the specific release of the this github repo and go over to the manifests folder when you go in here you'll see the manifest for alert manager grafana cube state metrics node exporter prometheus and everything you're going to need that we're going to take a look at in this video so if you're new to this channel, everything I do is documented on GitHub. So if you get the Docker development YouTube series, everything I do is going to be in the Prometheus monitoring folder. I have a Kubernetes folder and I have an updated um, folder here for 1.18.4 of the Kubernetes cluster I'm going to be running today. Inside here, I have all the manifests we're going to be taking a look at, as well as a readme guide with all the steps I'm going to follow. So feel free to check the links down below so you can follow along. So if we take a look at our readme file, the first step is to get a cluster with Kubernetes 1.18.4. For this, I'm going to be using Kind. Kind is a great way to run a Kubernetes cluster in Docker. And this also allows you to target specific versions of Kubernetes. So to get a Kubernetes 1.18 cluster, I'm going to say Kind Cluster Create. I'm going to call it Prometheus and I'm going to pass in the node 1.18.4. That'll go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster on my local machine using Docker containers. So now that my cluster is up, I can say kubectl get nodes and we can see that now we have a one node cluster running in docker on our machine the next command I'm going to use is kubectl create namespace monitoring. So I'm going to create a namespace called monitoring. This is going to allow us to um, house all our monitoring resources together in a single namespace. So next up, we're going to be creating the Prometheus operator. The Prometheus operator has two purposes. It automates the creation and the configuration of Prometheus instances. So we don't have to create deployments and pods and manage config maps for each of the Prometheus instances. It also gives us access to this new Kubernetes object called a service monitor, which allows us to select different services that we want to monitor in our cluster. So as we're going through this guide, once we have everything deployed, we'll be creating a bunch of service monitors to monitor different parts of our Kubernetes cluster. We're going to be scraping cube state metrics, node exporter, the API server, and you can also use service monitor to scrape your actual microservices applications. And that'll give us enough metrics to monitor our Kubernetes cluster. So if you take a look at our 1.18.4 folder, you'll see we have a Prometheus operator folder. So to apply that, I say kubectl apply in the monitoring namespace, and I go ahead and apply the Prometheus monitoring Kubernetes 1.18.4 Prometheus operator folder. That's going to go ahead and create custom resource definitions, um, RBAC roles, and everything we need and spin up our Prometheus operator. If we run kubectl get pods in the monitoring namespace, we can see the Prometheus operator is now creating. Now Prometheus operator will allow us to spin up Prometheus instances on the fly, which we'll do later down the track. Oh, so next up, we're going to be taking a look at Node Exporter. Node Exporter is a folder over here. All the YAML from the Kube Prometheus repo is over here, so you can take a look. Now, Node Exporter is one of my favorite monitoring components as it surfaces almost every single Linux metric that is known, and it surfaces it up for collection. And then we're going to deploy a service monitor that's going to allow our Prometheus to scrape our uh, Node Exporter pods and take all that rich Linux telemetry so we can hook that up to a Grafana dashboard. So to deploy Node Exporter, I'm just going to say kubectl up in the monitoring namespace and I'm going to apply the 1.18.4 node exporter folder. That's going to go ahead and set up a daemon set that's going to be monitoring every single Linux machine in our cluster. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the cube state metrics folder. Now, cube state metrics provides rich telemetry about pods, services, ingresses, deployments, stateful sets, and all the different types of Kubernetes objects that are running on our cluster. Now, to deploy that, we're going to say kubectl in the monitoring namespace. We're going to apply Prometheus monitoring 1.18.4 cube state metrics folder that's going to go ahead up and spin up the cube state metrics server which is going to be grabbing telemetry from our cluster and provide it to prometheus now next up we're going to be taking a look at alert manager now alert manager is used to 
manage alerts. Now jokes aside, alert, the way alerting works in Prometheus is Prometheus, um, we basically write rules of what we want to monitor. So we can monitor things like CPU and memory and disk IO and things like that in Prometheus. Now when these rules fire, Prometheus will create alerts. Now alert manager is used for a couple of things. One is alert manager manages where the alerts must go, whether you take it to Microsoft Teams or Slack or whatever kind of chat application you're using. Alert manager also manages batching and grouping of alerts. So instead of sending thousands of alerts every few seconds, it'll batch it up and send only one alert. And it also has the capability to silence alerts. When you know your team is working on solving the problem, you can go in and silence the alerts in alert manager. So basically manages the life cycle of alerts. So to deploy that, I'm going to say kubectl in the monitoring namespace. I'm going to apply the alert manager folder. That's going to go ahead and spin up an alert manager pod, which is going to hook itself up to Prometheus. And whenever Prometheus triggers alerts, alert manager will manage the life cycle of that alert. <laughs> Now we're going to be taking a look at the Prometheus cluster monitoring folder. This folder represents the Prometheus instance that's going to be monitoring our Kubernetes cluster. If you take a look at every folder that we've just applied, every one of them have a service monitor. And this Prometheus instance that we're about to deploy is configured to scrape all these service monitors and pull all that telemetry in. So to deploy that, I'm going to say kubectl in the monitoring namespace. I'm going to say apply and I'm going to apply the Prometheus cluster monitoring folder. That's going to go ahead and spin up a Prometheus pod which is going to be pulling all those service monitors we've just created as well as a couple of extra service monitor there's a service monitor to scrape the api server there's one to scrape the kubelets of every machine in the cluster and then the final one if you take a look at the prometheus yaml itself it has a service monitor selector that can be configured so here we basically tell it we want to scrape node exporter cube state metrics api server and kubelet and last but not least, we're going to take a look at the Grafana folder. Now, Grafana has all its dashboards defined as config maps. If you take a look at the dashboard definitions, you'll see all of these, um, basically a config map list with quite a lot of config maps. All of this is again pulled out of the Q Prometheus GitHub repo. So you can use that to um, pull every different type of Kubernetes version. These dashboards do change over time. Because I like Node Exporter, I created an extra dashboard called Node Exporter, which provides rich telemetry of our Linux machines running in the cluster. So to deploy that, I'm going to say kubectl um, in the monitoring namespace. I'm going to say create and I'm going to pass in the Grafana folder. That's going to go ahead and create our Grafana pod. It's also going to create all the config maps. Basically, when Grafana starts up, it'll look at the config map um, and look at a specific folder and pull all the dashboard definitions in there. So to finally see the whole stack up and running, we can say kubectl in the monitoring namespace, get pods, and we can see we have everything up and running. So we have three alert managers, a Grafana, we have cube state metrics, we have node exporter, our Prometheus instance, and the operator. Now to go and test out Prometheus, we have to go and access it using the port forward command. So I'm going to say kubectl port forward to the Prometheus pod on port 9090. That's going to give me the ability to go into the browser, and then I can go over to status and targets, and this will show us all the targets that Prometheus is scraping. So we should see the API server, cube state metrics, we should see the kubelet, as well as node exporter up and running. Now to access our dashboard, we have to port forward to Grafana. So I'm going to say kubectl um, port forward Grafana pod name and then port 3000. Then we can go ahead to the browser and access it over port 3000 and it'll give us a prompt for username and password. It's just admin admin, which is the default credential. And you'll see a bunch of dashboards already imported here. If you go over to the little gear and you go to data sources, you'll see da uh, Prometheus has automatically been linked up. So let's take a look at the dashboards. There are a couple of dashboards that are important here. So you can see we have Kubernetes slash um, one of the on networking so you have various levels of networking you have kubernetes slash networking at a cluster level you have networking at a workload level and you have networking at a namespace and pod level so when we take a look at the namespace pod level you can see we can actually filter on different namespaces and we can we can see the networking bytes received and byte transmitted of all the pods running in our cluster we can also see the send and receive bandwidth of all the pods running in the cluster we can see packets received packets sent as well as errors that are of packets that are that are potentially dropped. Then we have also various levels of compute. So we have compute for, for pods, we have compute for nodes, we have compute for namespace workloads, and we have compute for namespace pods. If we take a look at the compute resources for pods, we can see that we can filter on every namespace and pod running in the cluster. We can then see CPU usage, we can see CPU throttling, CPU quota, memory usage, memory quota, and as well as some network statistics that are very useful. If we're running stateful sets in our cluster, there's a stateful 
set dashboard that we can also filter on namespace and stateful sets. Then we also have a very important one, which is the kubelet. Now remember there's a kubelet running in every virtual machine or every node on your cluster and a healthy kubelet means a healthy cluster. So the kubelet will give you a bunch of metrics um, showing the health of all the containers running on that node. It'll also show you things like operation rates, pod start rates and durations. You have a bunch of storage metrics that are very important as well as CPU usage and memory usage. If you're running a self-managed cluster, the API server dashboard is also very important. Shows you a bunch of telemetry, rich metrics about the API server and its connectivity with etcd as well as memory and CPU usage. And the other dashboard that I really like is the node exporter full. So every machine running in your cluster has a node exporter running on it. So you can actually see the different hosts that are running. So if you're running multiple clusters, you can filter on machine here. And this is really good to find bottlenecks on your, on your cluster. When you identify what machine a microservice is running on, you can come in here. So usually when you SSH to a machine, you run commands like top and VM stat to troubleshoot the machine. Now all that telemetry is actually surfaced up here. So you don't need SSH. You can have a look at like quick CPU loads and loads on the machine. You can go and have some basic CPU and memory and network usage as well as disk. If we scroll down, you can see a, a good breakdown of CPU, memory stack, network traffic, disk space used, disk IOPS and IO. Then we also have all the memory information. We have mem info about different levels of memory monitoring. And then we also have VM stat. So if you're used to VM stat, you can see like memory, basically page faults. You can see oom killer, whether a pod is running out of memory and being killed. You can also see system time sync and system processes. You can see system D if you need to monitor stuff running on system D, which will show up here as well. And then we can take a look at the, the file system. So we can see um, the file, file system space available. Um, very importantly as well, the number of file nodes free, file descriptor and file node sizes. And then last but not least, a lot of rich network telemetry. So you can monitor network traffic by packets, um, by errors. You can see if there are any packets being dropped on the machine. You can see various other network metrics as well. And then if you're used to running like SS and uh, NetStats on a machine and you want to monitor network sockets, this one is really useful. So you have like socket stats for TCP as well as UDP. And what's also really useful is you can see sockets and time weight in use and allocated. So this helps troubleshooting outbound connectivity of microservices running in Kubernetes. And then you also have NetStat. You can also see number of TCP connections and also TCP errors. And then finally you have Node Exporter itself. So that's how you set up Prometheus monitoring on Kubernetes cluster with a few simple steps. If you're new to Kubernetes and you're new to monitoring Kubernetes, check out my playlist link down below to my Kubernetes monitoring guide. I have a very in-depth tutorial playlist about how to monitor Kubernetes and each of the components that I've showcased today. Also, let me know down in the comments below, how do you guys monitor your Kubernetes cluster? And let me know down below also what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future. And as always, like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.